South Africa was formed as a colony based on exploitation of natural resources and of people. When gold and diamonds were discovered in the late 19th century, the country industrialized rapidly. The demand for labor in the mines and factories led to large-scale migration to Johannesburg and the port cities of Cape Town and Durban, from across the subcontinent India, China and Europe. Black people were forced off their land and into the cities to find work. In the melting pots of the new cities, they created their own culture. From the start, work was racially stratified. White workers got the best jobs. Black workers did the most dangerous and low-paid work. The challenge for South Africa's workers has always been to form a non-racial labor movement. Waves of industrial unrest after the First World War saw the formation of the first unions to organize black workers, the Industrial Workers of Africa and the Industrial and Commercial Workers Union, or ICU. These unions rejected racism and fought for gender equality. After the Second World War, another wave of militancy centered in the mines led to the creation of the non-racial South African Confederation of Trade Unions. But the apartheid government banned non-racial unions and arrested union organizers. Black workers were banned from skilled jobs, and the government didn't recognize black trade unions. Union organizing was driven underground. In 1973, a wave of wildcat strikes against low wages spread out from the docks in Durban, along the transport routes and the supply chains, taking in the textile industry and many other factories. Even though their unions were not recognized, workers began to organize and win. The student uprising of 1976 added to the momentum of the growing union movement, and the apartheid government was forced to recognize black unions. Workers came together to form the powerful federation for Satu in 1979. For Satu was committed to workers' control of the economy and a non-racial democracy in South Africa. After unity talks among unions committed to building a non-racial, non-sexist and democratic South Africa, COSATU was formed in 1985. The Union Federation committed to fighting both bad bosses and the racist regime. We have a great task to fulfill, comrades. A task that will liberate our people in South Africa and ensure that the society that is established, the society in which the wealth of the country is owned by the people. First step towards um, unified working class movement. We know that then uh, the, the working class in South Africa is not really organized, but COSATU is a step forward towards uh, forming a movement, a working class movement. And then COSATU will organize industry by industry to form that that, that, that movement. The formation of this Congress represents an enormous victory for the working class in this country. Never before have workers been so powerful and never before have workers been so united and never before have workers been so poised to make a mark on society. At the Congress, worker representatives debated everything from the wording of the Constitution Comrade from Musa. to which logo to choose. Elijah Bahai was elected president and Jay Naidu was elected general secretary. South Africa's trade unions understood the link between apartheid and capitalism. They understood that the exploitative system was highly profitable for business and the two had to be tackled together. We don't, in South Africa, we don't want to change the face of the government to put the black capitalists forward. But what we want is to change the system, to change the society, to change society. The unions realized that they could be the economic arm of the struggle for freedom. If they shut down the economy with industrial action, apartheid would no longer be profitable and business would have to support democracy. In 1987, Kosatu adopted the Freedom Charter, the declaration that united the forces fighting against the regime. In a final push against apartheid, 
In 1989, Kusatu started a defiance campaign with the United Democratic Front and a mass democratic movement. This campaign of mass civil disobedience made it almost impossible for the regime to function. Workers went on strike, consumers boycotted shops, students walked out of schools and universities, street and block committees closed down their communities, apartheid laws were defied with a mass invasion of public space. People flocked to the beaches, parks and public buildings that were reserved for whites only. The combination of defiance in the streets and the economic impact of strikes and global sanctions meant the system was unsustainable. The apartheid government started negotiations for a transition to democracy. Nelson Mandela was released and became the first president of the new democracy in 1994. The constitution enshrined the human rights that so many had been fighting for. Workers' rights were protected and today workers are represented by their unions in a tripartite system with industry-wide collective bargaining. By coming together in unity, by organizing industrially, South Africa's workers found their voice and their collective power. Together they were more powerful than the regime, more powerful than racist laws, more powerful than guns. Coordinated industrial action, combined with mass civil disobedience and international sanctions, brought the regime to its knees. <laughs>